where the fun begins. Squint and see the X. Hello. Welcome to the council. We begin tonight's meeting of the council by calling the council to order. Hello to everyone and thank you for joining us. The council is a live Twitch talk show and podcast discussing Star Wars The Old Republic. I'm Elise. And with me are my fellow, my fellow council members, if I can speak, Magic Ace. Magic might just be able to wave. <laughs> Redna. Hello. And as you might notice, we don't have Sakari. Don't, don't know if he's going to join us or not, but um, he's mentally waving at all of us now. He's out again this week for some personal business. That's right. Yeah. So tonight we're going to be talking, of course, about, I'm sure this isn't a mystery, the summer 2018 roadmap. So, um, again, since uh, Magic Ace has to wave right now. Well, um, I got this. Are you going to do this part? Yeah. All right. Take it. After the broadcast, you can find our recorded episodes everywhere podcasts are found and on our YouTube channel. Just click the panel below or visit our website at thecouncilswotor.com. Check out our social media and don't forget to follow on Twitch. You can find our Facebook page at facebook.com slash thecouncilswotor and our Twitter at thecouncilswotor. You can also find our Patreon page at patreon.com slash thecouncilswotor. Back to you, Elise. I swear, I thought you were going to start selling OxyClean. Um, <laughs> oh, you want to do the icebreaker or me? <laughs> um, that's up to you. We can rock, paper, scissor it, or I can just do it since you just did that. It's up okay. to you. Go for it. Um, all right. So the icebreaker. Um, Keith's roadmaps communicate Bioware's focus over the next three months. What do you think about the idea that the next three months will be mostly about fixing and tweaking PvP in SWOTOR? So, um, so we could give Magic um, some time, or... I can go ahead and go now. She's quiet for right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. One second here. Say it real fast. <laughs> what was the question again? Sorry. Um, so, uh, key throw maps communicate Bioware's focus of the next three months. What do you think about it being focused oh. on PvP? I'm personally thrilled, and a lot of people are super salty about it. Like, Jen Chat is super salty, and all I gotta say is, listen <laughs> up. Your content is not the only content in this game, and your, your content is not the most important. Other content is needed. There are multiple kinds of players. So sit down and take a break so some of us can get the love in other areas we want. I personally love PvP. I've been doing it a lot the last two weeks. And I've been getting components like crazy, upgrading characters. This is way faster than trying to uh, do operations and getting them. Or trying to run flashpoints and grind CXP. Like, it's way faster. Other than farming Nimnefra. That's the fastest. But anyways... <laughs> Uh, you know, wait. I love it. I'm excited. I can't wait. I have a question. Are you doing Hammer Station as much? No. I'm almost, I've am i only done, like, maybe three Hammer Stations in the last, like, two weeks, <laughs> I think. And it was on Moby characters. <laughs> okay, I was so doing so much PvP. <laughs> <laughs> I know Hammer Station was, like, your thing. <laughs> Hammer Jelly. Yeah, I really do like some Hammer Station, but I've I've been distracted <laughs> I've been like excited knowing this stuff was coming up. So I'm like, play right now, get as much components as I can, get some characters up, and I'm going to have a whole bunch of level 70 characters that are like 248 that I'm going to go in and just wreck people with. And I'm like, I can't wait. I'm excited. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so, Redna, do you want to? <laughs> okay, good. Um, okay, Redna. Um, you, you I mean, an opinion? I, it's an interesting question because I didn't read it beforehand. And quite frankly, when I read through the roadmap, I didn't even realize it was fully PVP. So apparently it doesn't yes. bother me at all. I was just excited to see what was coming. <laughs> I mean, even the stronghold has a PVP vent bent to it. I guess so. that's true. Yeah. There's a definitely a theme of it, but I, I see other people getting other things. And realistically, all I care about is like getting to the main topic and discussing it. Cause I read this and I thought that this was awesome. 
Like, I thought there was some really awesome stuff to come. So Yeah, it feels like life is being breathed back into the game again, so to speak. Maybe that's just my opinion, because I know a lot of people still preach the game is dead. But to me, like, even this roadmap, and the fact that it was just a surprise roadmap, they're like, surprise, here's a roadmap. Um, I personally was like, ooh, this is exciting. Like, what else are they going to bring us? Everybody was like, oh, the game's, like, winding down. There's not a well, lot Well, that's left. exactly it, right? Like, I was glad to see this wasn't just some rehash or reinvention of the previous roadmap. Like, yeah. hey, you're getting another Flashpoint. Hey, you're getting more story forced into that Flashpoint. Hey, you're getting some more conquest adjustments. Like, no, actually, this is a whole bunch of other stuff that they've got planned over the next few months. So, realistically, it's... It makes a lot of sense. Don't give me the same stuff every roadmap. Instead, touch all points of this game. What do you think, though, Elise? Well, actually, if you go by the quarter system, the roadmap was actually kind of late. But I'm not. But there wasn't an announcement type thing like it's coming in this amount of time or expect it soon. It was just like roadmap. Right. So, yes, if you look at the scale of it, (laughs) it's late. Right. But they didn't promise you anything, so there wasn't people freaking out like, oh my gosh, you're late again. Oh, I've seen that coming. You know, well, Actually, they were. They were still doing that because they're counting. I don't have oh, an opinion because I was, you know, I don't care. It, it is what it is, and I'm not, like, I'm not waiting on the forums with bated breath waiting for the roadmap to come out. But, you know, to be fair, that's probably why they said surprise because, you know. But um, going well, back, well, for someone who I, doesn't I, count, it was a nice surprise factor. Let me put it that way. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so um, I'm glad that the they're doing it. <laughs> what? That's too were you one of the people the who game was... to count? Oh, okay. I thought you were saying, "Oh, I've been counting." That's what I thought you were saying. Um, I'm glad the PvP is getting some love. I like me some PvP. Um, but I'm kind of in the middle of the um, ambivalence curve, let's say. <laughs> so, um, but I have no beefs about it. But all you so, care about is the story, right? Mostly, yeah. Okay. So I, I'm like, you know, I'm always for people getting at least some of what they want. I always think it's a good thing, whether it's something I'm like waiting for or not. So. So, and and what, I mean, basically, okay, uh, darn, there isn't any story. Darn, they didn't add a planet. Darn. Oh, the planet really would have been cool. But no, I mean, I'm just kind of like, yay, PvP, but not, ooh, PvP. That's That's okay, I've got enough of that for both of us. It's all good. I, I mean, I'm not hating on it. I'm just saying, okay, well, great. (laughs) <laughs> well, and we'll see how these things play out, and we'll discuss it in a little bit because uh, we do need to get onto our poll of the week. But uh, yep, yep. I would, you know, it's definitely there, there's there's meat in here that I'm looking forward to to discussing. Oh, we didn't say what Sakari said. Sorry, I'm getting ah, like way good. too close. He, he wants, once you do the on it. He wouldn't say PvP is neglected in the game as the Yavin Four map came out earlier this year. I was pretty sure that was last year. It was. But I would say it has received far less focus than it should be receiving as one of SWOTOR's most popular gaming modes. I think a couple updates aimed specifically at PvP are long overdue. There are too many map exploits like Alderaan nodes, Capture Glitch, that are going right that are going on right now that need to be rectified. And the number of maps we have in the game, considering the game has been out for so many years, is entirely too low. More maps, more mechanics! Exclamation point! And actually, to that point... I, I want to say it was actually like around October or something that the last map came out. But realistically, um, I think I finally realized why I was confused by this question after reading his answer. Because this isn't exactly a PvP focus when you don't have the one game mode in the game that is 100% purely PvP even touched upon, which would be GSF. There are ground options of PvE. There is only GSF PvP, so we should say... This is ground-based PvP focused. Just for the anal retentive vocab. Oh, I was like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? (laughs) No, I agree, though. It is a form of PvP, and it should be looked at as part of the whole PvP. Whether or not it's the most popular is not the point. I agree. It is a PvP venue. Um, I, but didn't they, like, do something with GSF 
the same they time that they map. added that they added that no that's true the, the uh, yavin map yeah so, they added a map and then they've also um changed the rate at which you earn the currency in order to unlock right? features of your and i think they like quadrupled the rate so that right? it's a lot easier to actually get through the initial curve because that was the mo biggest complaint of gsf from anybody was it takes too dang long to even unlock enough stuff on my ship to feel like i'm competitive right you know like and the diehards also... could actually compete in the base ships but the diehards are like when you watch these guys play you don't want to be cute with them <laughs> or at least not against them <laughs> Well, they also did something just when I was talking to the person who was working on that at the cantina, the goal was, and again, I don't do GSF, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that that person was hopeful that they could make the base ships more competitive so that, yeah, the, the learning curve wasn't so hard for new players, too, that they were going to. Because he was talking about how nobody used like two of the ships or something because they were crap, and he wanted all of them to be viable. So right. I don't know if they did I think that it's or the not. The strike class, because there's the scouts that are really fast, and then there's the snipers that can sit from a long way back and super nuke, and then there was the middle class, which I think was called the strikes, and they were the ones that they were. I think they were original. Oh, there's also the bombers that were introduced too. But the, the strike class, I think, was meant to be more of a jack-of-all-trades. The problem is, in a game, when you've got diverse ship types, a jack-of-all-trades is a master of none and generally a bad idea to play. <laughs> I, I'm, I always get hit by them freaking Snape ships. So, yeah. Yeah. boo. I don't well, know. Last I don't time know. I queued up for one was during the DVL event. And I just remember going, I just got to get through five matches. I just got to get through five. <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about, but it sounds good. Way to go, Redna. <laughs> I, play I used with to love Kirk. GSF. Like, I used to play way too much, so. Um, Kirk is, uh, uh, that's like his favorite thing to do. He liked Wing Commander, so <laughs> that brings back the feels for him. So I'll play that with him if he wants me to, but. I always get killed by them freaking snipe ships. <laughs> always. Well, you, wanna, you want to uh, introduce our poll of the week? Yes. So this week we asked people how they were feeling about the roadmap. And sorry, y'all, I can't see. That's why I've got my phone here. I'm reading off my phone. Anyway. Um, so the question was, uh, the roadmap for the end of the year is out. Yes, I know it's spring and summer, but they did talk about the end of the year. So technically, I'm not wrong. Um, and you are feeling yeah, <laughs> A, excited, so much awesome stuff to look forward to, B, not excited, where's content? C, it's okay. I'm in the middle of the excitement curve. D, what's roadmap? Or E, more decos. So, um, can we? It, Whatever can we, would Elise vote for? Oh I my know, gosh. right? It's such a, it's such a puzzle. Um, <laughs> so, can can people? Can we do the vote in chat? It's or up and running are we... already. Yep. Excellent. They've even started voting already, so we're good. To go. I don't like to assume. That's why I ask. So, um, uh, magic. If if you can, it looks like maybe you can. Mm -hmm. um, what did what would you have voted? I vote A because, like I said, like I'm excited to to see things in the game that's new that I'm not being um, content deprived of. I'm thankful that there's life being breathed into the game, even if it's not going to please everyone, which is freaking impossible. So yeah, uh, I'm I'm pretty excited about it. I'm not going to say like it is the best roadmap I've ever seen, but to be honest, I don't really look at half of them. So, I mean, from the ones I've looked at, I think it's pretty exciting. I'm, you know, I'm excited. Yay, roadmap. Okay, and Elise, you say that you know what your answer should be, or at least most people feel they do. So what would your answer be? Huh? What's your answer to the question? Oh, more decos. Heck yeah. E for the win. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I were being serious, um, I would probably say C. Um, I'm not unhappy and I'm not like, woo, PvP. So just kind of, okay. And as for myself, actually, I'm kind of curious too about uh, the the play out just because um, 
the way that this played out and the, and the enthusiasm or vitriol or whatever, like I almost feel like, at least for myself, right? One, I re- as I think we mentioned it before, right? Like they didn't give us a date to look forward to. So quite frankly, I haven't been looking for it. The fact that they just dropped it really helped to curb my expectations because, and the, the remarkable thing, curb, yeah, curb, curb. your expectations. Yes. Okay, keep curb. going. Sorry, did, did I misspeak? <laughs> no, I wasn't expecting you to say curb your expectations, but keep going. Right. So my expectations weren't too high when this dropped, and I saw it. And to Magic's point, half the time I don't notice either until we someone mentions that we're going to discuss it on the show, and then I go look it up. But this time, I actually happened to see it coming out on Twitter. People, you know, retweeting it or, or linking to it or whatever. And so I went and looked it. And I had been sitting there like, okay, I know it's coming in the next three weeks. I wonder what I would like to see in this. And, you know, I wasn't speculating. I wasn't really expecting anything. I, was, I wasn't even at the point where I was thinking, well, they did this in the last one. So maybe they'll do that or whatever. Like, really, it was just I was reading through and I was like, oh, that's cool. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Oh, you know, and like, as we got as I got to the end of it, I was like, hey, that's a nice set of stuff that I'm really interested in seeing. And so, you know, my knee jerk tweet right afterwards was I can't wait to talk about this on the show. So my enthusiasm was up, I'd say. Uh, I'm between between an A and a C, but I'd probably lend tend more just towards the A because I was pretty happy with it when I read it. Uh, All right. And did, did uh, Sakari give us anything? It doesn't look like it. Um, no. I mean, everything else is his I uh, can pretend to know what one. he voted for. I mean, I would say he's excited because he doesn't want the game to die either and he does <laughs> enjoy some PvP and if even he doesn't enjoy it as much his wife really enjoys it, so he'd be happy for her. Okay, that's my guess. All right, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wrote quite a bit for the topic, so my guess would be that, yeah, I would probably say you were correct that he was excited for it. All right. Um, let's wrap up the chat voting. Um, do we have any results yet? Momentarily. Yay! Woo-hoo, I got it to work. Okay, so <laughs> the Good. results are populating in the chat room now. <laughs> I should have put mine in, but I'll I'll read them from the chat room and, and pretend like mine's Please there. Please do. So we've got a uh, four for a zero for not excited. So four excited, zero for not excited, four for middle of the road, and two for more decos. You are good people. That's right. Wow. We have quality. No bias people. at all. None. No. <laughs> what? Why on earth would we have such pleasantly happy, <laughs> happily satisfied individuals in our chat room? It's like they don't deserve Especially to be on social media. Without decoration that <laughs> and decoration lovers. I mean, quality people. That's legit. That's yeah. legit. Okay. So. Um, for our community poll, and it's um, up. first place at oh, it okay, is. as you all can see, um, thirty-four percent said B, not excited. Thirty-two um, percent were it's okay. I'm in the middle of the excitement curve, or C. Twenty-eight um, percent for excited, um, and six percent more decos again. Woo-hoo. And no votes for what's a roadmap. So, yeah. at least of those that responded, yeah, last year I, I would have voted for that one. <laughs> they I, actually looked at the red ma- roadmap, or at least didn't want to admit that they hadn't looked at the roadmap. Yeah, I wouldn't admit it either. Although maybe having more decos in there is what we should be doing more often, because that way, if they don't know what a roadmap is, they at least don't have to feel foolish. Heck. Everything needs right. more decos. Exactly. <laughs> Always. You don't even have to think about that one. Just more decos. I'm just kind of curious about the spelling of more, though. Like more, or is, is, isn't it M O R E? Yeah. No, this is this this is definitely how you speak in gamer vote vernacular. Yes. More. M O A R. Moi. <laughs> I need moi. All or when right. people go, Welp. Like, it's not well, it's welp. Anyway. Sorry, I guess I'm not a hardcore true gamer. I'm just a Swotor gamer. My bad. 
Um, it's okay. okay. Someday you'll have numbers in your name too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's uh, let's chat. Yeah, let's hit the highlights. I guess we'll start with the one. Uh, I say oh. magic goes first. While she's got a, well, she's got a breather. Lead the way. Okay. Um, for let's see here. <sighs> okay. Obviously, I'm excited about it. So I, I would say that I want the the public test server thing because I've wanted to do that for a while. I was really excited about the idea of that. Um, different things have gotten in the way of that before. I've got an offer to go to the PTS server, and I had stuff come up, the reason why I couldn't do it, and then I was worried about it, and I'm like, well, I'm not a... Um... Sorry, my daughter just pulled my phone out of the socket, and iTunes just popped up. Anyways, so um, I was like, I, I would love to do that, but I can't right now. Stuff happened. So... Making it possible for other people and also to record the results would be really great because I feel like the game overall would be able to benefit from that. So I'd like to see that. Um, also, the Narsha Life event. I know so many people that are like freaking upset about it, and I'm like, I'm excited. I like to I like <laughs> to spend that? the free coins that they give me. Everyone's like, I waste all my money there all the time. I'm like, well, I just spend the free ones. You know, go do a bunch of flashpoints. Make money and CXP off the flashpoints, and you get tokens off of each boss drop. So I don't really see what you're complaining about. So, anyways, that's how I have like a stack of 500 on one of my tunes. It's nice they got it started early too, so that we were picking them up last night, right? (laughs) Yes. And now they're giving you the loyalty reward of the speeder. I mean, I already get like probably 10 to 15 speeders in my mail every time I make a new character. But hey, what's another mail that'll make it 55 for me? All right. Uh, the cross faction grouping, freaking excited for because I really enjoy. Sorry, I know I'm bouncing on the camera, but it's keeping my daughter quiet. But anyways, so I'm really excited about the cross faction because in a previous episode we had, we were talking about ways to better the game and what would better PvP. And one of our big things was cross faction gaming, and that is because this is let's just late. be honest. Yes, let's just be honest. Sometimes the pub side gets wrecked hard and sometimes the imp side gets wrecked hard you get people that just come in and they're just destroying everyone and there's no mix up to it people get disheartened they don't want to pvp people stop logging in it's hard to want to get through two dailies and a weekly when you're getting wrecked so hard that you can't win anything it takes forever to grind it out because every time you win you get two going towards your weekly when you lose you only get one so the incentive to keep playing on that too when you know you're never going to get to the end of the weekly but before you have to log off it kind of ruins it so i think the cross faction is good for that also more frequent q pops which is a huge deal especially when you were in the lower population servers and that was a problem so uh also i would say the new hub ball arena I've got mixed feelings on hub ball because it depends on what character i play basically long story short I have really good times with it and really bad times with it. At least me really hate Hutball. Sometimes I really hate Hutball. Like if I'm on my Merc and I've got hydraulic overrides, I can hit that and run through like the fire pits or slime pits. And I'm like, screw you suckers. And I'm just like running as fast as I can. Or my operative can roll through the flames with evasion and I don't take any damage. And I'm like, yeah, end of the goal line. Uh, But you know, that's only if I've also got a team that can work with me on that. Otherwise I'm going to get squished hardcore. So, am I excited for a new map for anything? Sure. PvP for Hutball? Meh. We'll see. That's yes, right, Magic Baby. We'll see. I won't know until I play it, so I can't really tell you yet. I don't know. And this Hutball map in particular looks partic- is, looks quite interesting, just because they yes. say that it's actually going to be plat... Like, uh, what do they say? It's like it's a high elevation. Elevated. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that to me I, sounds straight I like up they like added the there Rishi are going to be edges arena. that there's no bottom to. You're going to be able to be knocked off. See, I don't see I don't like that only because like that's a <laughs> major tactic in like arenas is you get up on like the catwalks or on the sidewalks and stuff and you knock your opponents off, they get LOS, they have to try to get around, you stun them, you kill them before their healer gets to them. Like so if yeah. I've got if I've got Strategy. to be up here, I know I'm gonna get knocked off, and I'm not even gonna really enjoy it. So I honestly don't think I'm gonna like that factor. But again, I can't really judge until I play it. I hear I we get a reach strong. I love it with that super shove. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. we're getting a Rishi stronghold at this point. 
Um, until they bring me Voss, I don't know that I'm going to get excited for a Stronghold. I'll probably buy it. I've got every one that they've come out with. I finally just bought the Tatooine one not too long ago. Uh. So I will probably get it. Um, unless they come out with some freaking great decos that are better than the previous Rishi decos, um, I can't see me really getting too stoked about it. Uh, end of Rank Season 9? Sure. I'm excited for that because I've got my butt kicked quite a bit in ranked this season, and I don't have enough comms to really buy anything anyways because I've been doing regs because I got sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the possible team builder stuff. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. The PvP and the strongholds. Okay, just to, to give this real quick, I think this is a great, like, guild thing, or if you PvP with someone that you never can queue with. Sorry, my daughter's stacking her stacking cups. I'll try to make this quick. Um, it's really great, I think, if you want to PvP with your guildies and you want to know you're all together. Um, I think this kind of thing would be super great because you can get people involved, like stick a calendar event, be like, hey, we're having a big event in a stronghold, we're going to PvP in it, you know, <laughs> have a contest with who has the best PvP, who has the best outfits, whatever, like just, and then it's not like a hateful environment where people are chewing each other out because they didn't get what they wanted or you didn't listen exactly what the other person said and do exactly what they told you to do. I think that's great. Also, I think it's great when you you keep in interacting with people that you keep queuing with on a daily basis and then you can just invite them and be like hey bring some people up here and let's just pvp up here you know just to mix it up and i think with the new map it'll keep it from being too dull and i like the two new map newer maps we've got now um but i personally don't think more pvp stuff is bad because i think it just broadens it and for people like elise who can't stand hutball it gives them options and also you're supposed to be able to click now you're supposed to be able to like click off Hutball if you don't want Hutball. So maybe at least will PvP with me more yeah. now. Because <laughs> she can click Hutball. I hate Hutball. I so hate Wesh Ball more. D to be fair, Hutball is not nearly yeah. as vile as Quesh Ball. But, okay, go on. It just depends on the two. So just to wrap it up, like kind of like to sum up my thoughts on this, I would say basically that um, I, I can't... I've not read anything PvP based in this roadmap that I disagree with or I don't like or I'm not excited for other than like the the new map I don't know how I feel until I play it so other than that overall I think everything's great I'm excited for it and um, I see nothing bad so I will say though that they are going <laughs> and I will it. say they're sorry I had to give her a chip <laughs> I will say that uh, they say they're going to crack down on people using exploits, and there's pros and cons about this for me personally, just because um, sometimes you don't know that you're using an exploit. I've said this before. Someone like me, who's never played another game like this before, I think this is the game that I'm paying to play. I'm working my butt off to get gear and content and stuff. If something works out in my favor and it's better than I thought it was, I'm like, well, heck yeah great you know i'm not looking at it like i'm exploiting the system or sticking it to the devs to me i'm thinking oh great you know i get a little bonus for working so hard <laughs> so i i know that they need to work out things because there are some people that do like hardcore do exploits and overall that's not healthy for the game but as far as i'm saying like cracking down on that stuff i don't know like hey, in my I have opinion missed. no bug is an exploit Bioware needs to learn vocabulary. It's difficult. English is a difficult language. I accept that. Additionally, if a bug remains in the game long enough, it's no longer even a bug. It's a mechanic. And if they don't want well, it to work that way, they need to do something about it. You know, like straight up. So play the game the way they give it to you. That's my uh, opinion. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, that's my thoughts. And I'm probably going to have to get up and take care of my kid in just a minute. But <laughs> now you know in case I don't get to talk again. So there's so much to unpack there. At least let's go through this a little more slowly. <laughs> uh, allowing more players on the t on the public test server because this is actually not just a PvP matter. This is actually right. a lot more. Do right. you have any opinion on that matter? I think more testing by more people is always more better. Yeah, yeah. I actually completely 100% agree with it. I it's the one thing that's always kind of annoyed me. I mean, Bioware has every right to handle their test server how they want to. And I've actually right. felt like they've been pretty terrible 
at how they've even implemented their test servers. Like they've got the security in the wrong layer, which is why they were always complaining. Well, we put things on the test server and then the data miners get it right away. Yeah, except that if you put it behind the password that they can't download and install the patch, then you and you don't give them access, you can at least weed out who the data miners are and get, you know, like prevent some of that, which they've never made any effort to do. But to be perfectly frank, I don't care about data miners. I don't care right. about people spoiling stuff. I, I think that I they don't. need to stress test their stuff before they put it out there. Yeah. I mean, data miners exist in just about every online game I've ever seen. Any game of modern of the modern era, era yeah. can be data mined. I mean, I have yet to see a game that people I haven't seen in some post. Hey, look at what was hidden in the game code. So I think we as gamers accept that. And if you want to know it, then you read it. Really clever. If you don't want to know it, then you don't read it. Right. And so, I mean, it's just, I, I, I and don't... really clever game that, devs actually put in false information to their test server to let the data miners go and put out false information in order to just confuse things and set up an expectation with the community, you know, like, well, maybe, oh, no, that's too outlandish, or, you know, like, I don't believe it. Right. You know, and, and they actually right. did it once for BioWare. They actually put it, there was a test server going before Christmas, and they put up a Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer-themed um, Tauntaun. Had a bright oh my red god, that nose. would be freaking hysterical. Well, and the thing was, like, 90% of the people that heard about it were like, oh my god, don't do this to my Star Wars, right? You know, you're ruining my childhood! You know, that kind of response. <laughs> but, you know, to be perfectly honest, I, I'll be honest, I was there too. I, I will own up to that. But now, my personal attitude like, is, they're legends, and they should do whatever the hell they want. And come on, let's have some freaking fun in the world. Like, right now, the world has too little fun and no sense of humor. So I'm, I say bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> or what you do is that you open up the parts that have to be stress tested to all yeah. comers and then things that you want to be more secret to only allow, you know, NDA influencers or trustworthy prior to whatever, you know, gatekeep you know, close that gate a little bit more tightly right. for the stuff you want to keep secret so that at least it's playable and you can find bugs. That's what I did when I was a beta tester for Inquisition. We had a huge release for um, the when they put dragons in the horde mode PvP thing and they had two characters from one of the other games in there and, you know, the, the only people who knew about it was us. Yeah, And it hit Twitter Somebody released it, and uh, you know, like we all knew it had to be certain people, and we all went after the those people. Actually, so. I even got a little bit upset because uh, I, I tangentially, I didn't actually get called out, but I had been on one of the test servers, and somebody decided to film activities that they were in and release it early, and. I, you know, ever since then, I don't actually put my real name as my character name on the test server because there was in bright, you know, <laughs> red letters, Redna. I think we were doing a PvP match or something, you know, and it was like Redna, and I'm scaring around. And I'm like, man, this makes me look bad. Like I'm, because co I am tangentially complicit in something breaking the NDA. You know, so right. Which is it's it's a shame that people have to feel that way. Like I I actually and and Bioware is pretty good about giving people permission. Hey, you can film thing you know record things whatever in advance um right. preferably we'd like you to wait until we're about to release it towards the end of the testing right. period that way they fixed out a lot of the bugs but then you know they say as, as soon as we give the go-ahead you can you know that because that's nice that gives people time to to edit their footage make things look better you know present it on their web pages right. or youtube channels or whatever but i'm just really right. glad to hear they're opening it up it shouldn't just be their um super fans or their their whatever they are you know, I agree. Bioware influencers. It shouldn't, yep. honestly, it shouldn't just be uh, guilds that are purely dedicated to whatever it is they're having tested either. Because realistically, right. usually it's the stupid people that don't know how to do it the quote unquote right way that discover where the real bugs are. Right. You know, the hardcore that it's being designed for, right. they're going to play it the way expected. Or, for example, with operations, let's say. Yes, exactly. Um, it, you know, it, you don't want hardcore rating teams that have been rating for two, three, four, five years to be in there testing it. Yes, when people go in, and when I went in with my group, you know, we all tried to keep an open mind of where we thought there would be problem parts for less experienced or pug groups. But still, you don't really know until you're, you know, unless you are 
what really is the pain points. So really we need to open it up and actually try and get a pug group together in the test server. Um, how about the next, let's move on to the next section. How about, uh, how does everybody feel about the Narshada event? Uh, basically I could care less. I know <laughs> she's excited about it and I, I, I'm literally completely ambivalent. It makes sense. They've done it the last That's two because summers. you streamed it for hours last year. I was there when you did it. <laughs> Yeah, and it was a stupid one the first year, too. It's it's just a really, really lazy event. But I don't care. People enjoy it. They've been doing it every summer since for two years now. And I expect them... I, I would be more upset, honestly, if they didn't do it. It's got nothing for me. I'm not interested anymore. But I'm glad that people get their chance. Well, for me, it was nostalgic. Because it was going on when I first started playing this game. There you go. And yeah. then it, there was a... The, a lull. They didn't have it for what two years or something like that. And then, was it two years or was it three? Well, it was. Whatever. I think it was like three years oh, ago. They skip the first event. They skipped it. Yeah. Year? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. Because I, mean, I met I, I met my husband during that event, so that was funny. But uh, when they uh, when they skipped a year, he was like, "Oh man, now I'm never gonna get the rest of that outfit." <laughs> Yeah, so for me, it's nostalgic, but um, I can understand there are people who feel that it's boring and, you know, they could be doing lots of things and doing the night event. Personally, I didn't get the whole covert armor set, so <laughs> I haven't been in there to see if it's, like, available. Isn't it up now? The Nur Shaddaa uh, event? Yeah, I, I think it went live it's this up weekend, now. so... Or I know it was up um, on Sunday for sure. I don't know when it was Okay, live. so I didn't know it was up this week, and I wasn't paying attention. Well, but, reportedly, it wasn't um, meant to be. Everybody was a bit surprised that it started, oh, quote-unquote, early. Okay. Um, so I have no idea if that armor set is in there, but if it is, I'm going to be excited. Um, I'm hoping they have some good decos, because I really loved the dance floor and the microphone. I thought they were cute and clever. I agree and, with that, actually. I really like those new decos. And if they come I up thought with they something were very clever... Nice. Or even along the lines of all this PvP stuff that we're getting to, um, I would like some decos yeah. from the from the event because those were I have a dance floor and my and bar and train, and I have to say it makes it a party train. I got my microphone, I got my <laughs> dance floor, I've got the disco stuff on the ceiling. You walk in and everyone's like, Come "Oh my on, gosh, Magic, train. your train's so awesome!" And I'm Come like, "Thank it. you. Here we go. Let's go party. <laughs> it's good time." Right, when exactly. I have jukebox on there because we need um, music. I liked the you know you got the. The bar and stuff. I, I just, I to me, I, I know I go on and on about decos, but people get really salty about, you know, um, the, the cartel market packs that they're not earnable and you have to buy them with real money or you have to, like, save up your subscriber coins, which is also essentially real money because you get it for subscribing. So you have to pay something to get something. So either way, it's involving real money. And people get upset about, you know, there's not as many cool things to earn in game as there are that you have to buy. And um, I think decos is that kind of where you can split that middle. You know, it's something that people can earn the game with so many strongholds. It's hard to have too many decos, really, if you think mm -hmm. about it. Um, and it's like, it really is a win-win. So I, I, I think that they should each event every year, let's get some new stuff. Um, the special event, like the the Christmas pack. I think Ma Magic and I bought it because it was cool yes. to have the train and all that stuff. And awesome. you coolest deck yeah. ever. So you can like tie that in too because there was ones you could earn with the event, and then there was that one pack that you know was unique and special, and that was worth my buying too. So you know, I, I just they need to do more decos. But I've said that before. I agree. Um, um, and just as a, uh, not to be a Debbie Downer, but uh, Starry's Saber uh, mentions that he hasn't seen any new in the event that uh, went live this weekend. So, All right. Well, Hopefully I could do with another later, bar. But, I could yeah. do with another bar and some more dance floors and uh, 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 the finish out my Kobo armor. So I'm not sad about it. And clearly, um, anybody... since everybody else has skipped over it, the 4v4 arena is not that exciting. I don't want to talk about it. I'm just saying that. I was going to say, we haven't got there yet. I know, but We're even Sakari didn't rampage. put notes in about it. So. Oh. Yeah, he did. New 4v4 arena right above the hut ball. He just didn't talk about it. Right. We're not there yet. <laughs> um, 
Rampe- Rampage speeder, I could care less. I don't even like. I don't even like click on half. Okay, of we'll wait for it because we do have a picture. Hey guys, here's the picture. It's the TF4 Rampage speeder Ooh. loyalty award reward. You Ooh. do actually have ten days to to get this. You need to be subbed up before the thirty first in order to be eligible for this, and then you'll be able to get it in the mail. So I, yep. some people are speeder collectors and uh, don't want you guys to miss out on sure. this. Um, I would like to talk about, oh, we didn't talk about um, Sakari's note, but basically he's kind of meh about the Narshadal event. He yeah, was hoping to get DBL. Um, and I have to say, though, I do agree with him to a point about wanting another version of the original DVL events this yeah. summer. If they do like, another version of the original DVL event, I will probably just unsub for the summer because I'll be tempted <laughs> to waste that much time and I've got a kid on the way and frankly, I don't need it. <laughs> I, 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 I would totally I, do and it. And it was so offensive. But, and I would do it on another it server. First place. I'm not repeating that ever, yeah. event ever again. I enjoyed it, but I didn't go hardcore like it seems like you and Magic did. I only did the two characters. Oh, I did everything. I was like... I was 100%. like, I don't have time for all this crap. Just what do I need to do to get the extra character? Okay, I'll do that. But I enjoyed, like, the incentives for doing some new stuff. I played GSF just like you. Pretty much that was my first was time so ever. Good. We had, you know, one uh, someone from the um, – we had a gentleman from a, you know, a – gsf guild come in and teach us before i mean it was it was a nice kind of you know moment i i really enjoyed the whole camaraderie and people going hey does anybody need any help getting blah blah yeah. blah i thought i thought that was all great so since i have i self-censor myself with content i'm not a completionist in any way shape or form i was cool with it but completionists perhaps have <laughs> I think the DVL would just be great simply because it it would give me a chance to do something on another server it would give me incentive to do more stuff on another server but I will say that if they make us do that again they better give me more server slots that I don't have to pay for because I am max I have 43 tunes on this server and I have 30 something on Starforge I have 9 on on the one Darth Malgus okay I got a lot of freaking characters Unless you give me more slots, I can't do them on my main servers. So help me out here, Star Wars. Help me um, out. Uh, you could delete. Said. Just saying. Mm-hmm. You could, I could delete. What? You could delete. No, but I play almost all of them. There's just a few that I don't play often. And they were DVL well, characters from the last event. So then delete those. But I put so much work into them. <laughs> I know, but it's just a game. Um, That's the point. Okay. Don't, don't say that on the show. Don't say that on the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, to do, do okay let's talk about cross faction grouping because i really like cross faction so to preface i my favorite area in the game well i've talked about it shadow of revan is like my favorite expansion for multiple reasons but one of the big ones is because everybody is working together right enemies of my enemies are my friends thing i like odessa and it is one of my favorite um, modes to PvP because I again love that. So cross faction for me is always good. Um, I like it. But um, what did Sakari say? He said he likes it. PvP feels divorced from the rest of the game's narrative. Um, find it interesting they're nullifying imp and pub teams at a time when they're bringing back the empire and republic but i doubt it'll make a difference so here's my so opinion we we had it introduced as a cross-faction queuing with odessa originally in the first place and for all intents and purposes they should remove it entirely from the game the factions <gasps> don't exist what cross-faction grouping no they should the the Faction specific grouping should okay. be removed entirely from the game. Across I the you board, were saying we I should love take it. it. Cross Odessa faction queuing should I was fundamentally like, no. occur because the story has led us to a fact that we're in a third faction anyway. Well, that does, that obliterates the, the lines of the factions. 
Well, we're going back to the factions against each other, and I know you're not all up into the new so content, but basically it they said it was starting to Has crumble. And they're moving yes, back into but, it. but people... And guess what? Every uh, on both of the most, both of the significant story patches that have come out recently have given you a choice to choose which faction you want to be on. So it doesn't matter. Cross faction <laughs> queuing for everything. It does matter because I like it. to log in and crush the pubs. Okay, it matters. Don't take this from me. Stop it right now. <laughs> then go into onto the PvP shard and freaking play against some real pubs. <laughs> Um, I yeah. did, but the dirty scoundrel uh, got mad and stealthed out today and took off because he couldn't take my level 50 Torian. Suck it, scoundrel. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I th realistically though, the, 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 the problem is that when if you're on a bad time or whatever, or everybody's decided they want to go onto the imp side for this, that, the other, and you're trying to queue on the pub side and it's like, man, I'm watching this guy's stream who's popping and at 30 seconds after he queues up and I'm sitting in my queue for 15 minutes... Um, it just it makes it fee it can it can give a false sense of a dead server when you can't get into a queue and cross faction queues universally uh, eliminate that and I think that's a good thing on our much larger servers. And realistically, there are less PVPers who are playing PVP than say story players. I mean that that is a universal truth. So. It's better to have the queues pop more frequently because there's more people who can fill any slot than, you know, than segregated slots. It's just, it would be better for the overall health of yeah, the game. Yeah, actually, than... that's a really, really good point because I, I am sick and tired of queuing up on the pub side and getting a quick pop. But I, and I'm with, you know, eight D DPS. And then I go up against Imperials, and they've got three healers and a tank and four DPS, and we can't hold a thing. Are you kidding me? I you love know? that, because I'm one of those healers. <laughs> Which is fine. But yeah, I'd rather that you. everybody have a good time, rather than right. you just stomp on somebody's face. I know, and, but I'm a selfish Imperial, okay? Because <laughs> if you're the only one having fun, people are going to rage quit and not right. log okay, in. Fine. Because I would that's prefer, you're going to use the health logic than fine. <laughs> We already talked about the hutball, but actually it, it is coming up to the whole quote unquote team builder. The fact that as a part of all of this, they're also going to um, try and implement some form of team queuing, taking into account what people's roles are for unranked okay. PVP. And, yeah. you know, give me cross faction on everything and give me that in the unranked. And I'm going to be really, really, really happy. Um, I think that's been long desired. Um, and, and, you know, like, I want it to be soft enough that if you're a, a tank and no one, no other tanks are queuing, then fine, you can get queued in. But if another tank chooses to queue, then you're going up against them. Like, that's how the system should be designed, to balance. Uh, right. it, does, it doesn't necessarily need to give ideal teams, but it should, uh, you know, aim for balance. I just hope, though, that to echo and go a little, elaborate on that whole role thing... Um, I was watching Centaur's video that she made about hugging EV and group finder. And I hope it doesn't end up like that. I mean, she was waiting hours. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's exactly and why she was a it healer. Doesn't, it doesn't need so, to be a perfect match. Now in ranked, yeah. you do need to do that. All right. You need, if, if you've got a, a healer yes. queuing up, then the other team has to have a healer. That's like a, yep. a rock said fast thing, which is which and is that fine. is part of the reason why ranked takes forever to pop because yep. people are scared to get in there. So um, that's why you see advertisements in Gin Chat like, "Hey, looking for some, uh, you know, ranked DPS or blah blah blah." Is because you, it takes forever to single queue by yourself. Once in a while, I get an insta pop, but that's part of the reason why I stopped playing so much ranked because I could just get right into regs and not have to wait. And, and and for regs, I mean, it's not ranked, so it should it should be softer. You know, it doesn't need to be so hardcore. To be right. perfectly frank, though, with this whole like balancing and all of these little upgrades and things that they're doing to PvP, like, and we, you know, it's basically my only thought on this is until you give me a divergent gear set or or some kind of built-in statistic that separates the hardcore PvPer from the casual PvPer. In these queuing schemes, it's just frustrating. Basically, I want my expertise back. That's that's all that it boils down to. I want my expertise back so that some fresh fifty or fresh seventy can't go in and do ranked and be queued with or against me. <laughs> 
Well, but I mean, to to argue that point just a tiny bit, the expertise didn't segregate out everybody because God knows I really don't feel I'm good enough to it didn't really rank. play ranked. But I had by the time I hit fifty, and, I had enough because I was. Until you play, have an expertise rex. piece in every slot, you couldn't queue for PvP before co coffee. Well, I know, but what I'm saying is, is that I had a full set of expertise gear when I hit 50 okay. because I specifically did it that way, and I'm not God's gift to playing. No, of course ranks. not. But then at least so, you've, you've already put the amount of time and effort into the game mode to at least be assumed to have knowledge, like you know the shape of the map, you know. Right. <laughs> like, I, I, sure, right. you're not going to. I wasn't a, good at strategy. Doesn't but mean you're going to be a winner. Knew what I so, needed to do when I got onto hyper gates or whatever, but that's one thing not I love mentioned, low PVP. Right. One thing not mentioned, I just realized, um, I was watching a bad feeling podcast, um, when this first dropped and they mentioned like the smart thing to do at this point would to bring, would be to bring back the expertise in the gear. And I personally agree with that. I've been saying that for months and so just throwing this out there like obviously we're not the first podcast to say this since this came out because we got it on the late end but uh just to throw that out there i personally think that that is a smart 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 idea i think it's been a smart idea but especially with all the cross-faction stuff that's going to be coming in now and just the more variety of people we're going to have in there and i think it will help people try to be better at pvp because honestly i tried harder to just be a better player overall if I didn't have like the correct expertise if I didn't have all the right augments like I just played harder because I felt like otherwise I was just totally letting the team down and not everybody works that way some people don't freaking care I got it but in my opinion I think it would be better also just because it worked better than I think PvP worked better than than it does now but that's my personal opinion I just thought it was worth a mention that I think that would be a logical next step as well well, and then the only other thing, which is actually the most exciting thing about these PvP items, is the PvP stronghold. Like, this is awesome. Oh, actually, there's one more thing, but I, Sakari's got the same note I do. Which I guess we should mention. Sakari says, I can't be, even begin to underscore how enthusiastic I am about this. The current lack of any sort of effort to assemble workable teams that make sense needs review. There is no reason an arena team should have three healers and a DPS versus two tanks and two DPS. Anything that provides a general but not too granular improvement for purpose of wait times will be excellent. So he's obviously way into the whole queuing uh, changes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the PvP Stronghold. I'm so excited about this. When Strongholds first released on a PvP server, I thought one of the biggest shames in the world was that I was on a freaking PvP server and I should be able to flag myself and go battle royale against anybody that was in my Stronghold. And when I went onto the test server and found out that that wasn't possible, I was like, well, okay, this is a PvE server. So maybe when they release it on the PvP server, it'll be okay. No. You've never been able to freaking go Battle Royale. And that's so asinine. So the fact that they've got a PvP, and they talked about 1v1, 4v4, 8v8 even. Like, the fact that you can do grouped PvP engagements, and then they're also going to be releasing a bunch of decos. That's right, more decos that are actually PvP-themed with mechanics tied into them and stuff. This is actually one of the coolest things, and this is arguably more of a stronghold feature than a PvP feature, but it's awesome. This is innovation. This is yeah, cool. I love my little uh, hutball deco. I love throwing it at people. And if you, keep, if you do it by yourself and you don't have anybody to throw it at, it explodes and you fall to the ground. I'm like, that's fun. I wish more of the decos did stuff like that. I mean, that is cute. I, I don't... I, do I have that? I don't know. But, I, I mean, I, I think that's cool. I will probably not be getting the stronghold. That said, but I, I think it's great for a choice, and you know, and, well, and all I'm those really people who are organi organizing it. like tournaments and stuff. We've got people who do that kind of stuff. I saw somebody put up on Twitter a chatter on Reddit or something that they were having a PvP tournament. It was a guild like a couple of weeks ago. I, I think I think having a place to be able to do that is great and not just dueling because we've had a couple of tournaments i think for extra life uh, extra life or something an only alliance has and it was totally like a bracket dueling thing and i hate dueling so just 
it's too much pressure. Oh, well, first of all, I've, I've never liked duels. I've always thought it was the dumbest Shit. idea in the world. Like, it makes zero sense. It doesn't serve any function. It doesn't prepare you for anything other than perhaps an open world. It does, ser oh, it wait, does no, serve a function anymore, because so. whenever... It does serve a function because that was something one of my hard mode groups and I did whenever we were like waiting for the last person to get in the group or something like that before we'd pull trash. We'd go outside the instance and we would duel each other. And I gotta say, I may I killed a marauder on my sore healer and he was geared and it was just because I knew how to play my class and he was new to it and didn't know how to play his class very well. And it was a whole lot of fun. It's the purpose that it served me is that it was an entertainment value when I was waiting to do other things in the game. Rather than just sitting there bored, it gives you something to do for a few minutes before you get in and do your stuff. So while you may not That's see that it has a purpose, for, uh, some of us do <laughs> have purposes for it. Also, because if you've got a friend, like now they ha they'll have the strongholds to do I'm that. I'm not but, telling you that you're bad for your enjoying it. To do it. Many people do. I, it's, there's no you purpose said it for serves me no for, function. Right. It serves no function for the rest of the game. For preparing me for any engagements in the rest of the game i'd rather do 4v4s or 8v8s of anything because that you know prepares me for every other type of game type in the game other than i mean i've heard i've heard other people say that it helps learning how to do 1v1 i just but you know personally for me i'm more of a group kind of group, group goal that's right. why I play PvP. So at the one v one stuff, I always lose them because I'm just don't think fast well, that's, enough. That's but. why I'm really interested to see how they implement <clears throat> this whole stronghold thing. Because is it is this going to be new tech that's specific only for the stronghold? And then does that mean that these new decorations that they're going to be bringing out for it can only be used in the Rishi stronghold? Because one would assume that at least at the very most basic level, you'll still be able to use the decorations in other locations, and they're uh. interactable. But maybe you can't do the you know new PvP tech where it's four v four or whatever. But you should still be able to duel because you can you can throw down a duel right in your stronghold, yeah. and yeah. then have these decos around whatever they are. Like I'm just this is just really interesting to me. I'm very curious to see how it comes around. Right. Yeah, I can see that. And and especially in an engaged guild like ours, I can see and for extra life live streams, events and stuff, there's gonna be somebody in the guild who's gotten everything and set up some really interesting things and so I'm I'm looking forward to some of those group activities that tie into this. Sakari doesn't seem to feel the same exactly. He says he he likes the idea of the new stronghold, but doesn't see the PvP side getting much use except for guild events. Um and he'd prefer for them to make some some way to enter those shared uh, strongholds publicly into some kind of rotation. So basically, that you could queue wow. in with people. That would be intense. That'd be tech, cool, but, but I don't really cool. see that. I don't see that happening. Though. Yeah, I don't see it happening either. It's a great idea. I just I don't see him putting mm -hmm. in a whole new group finder <laughs> for for. I mean, that basically would be a a, a um jerry rigged kind of private match kind of thing a la destiny or overwatch where you can make your own private match and then you go in where you set the parameters and all that kind of stuff which they're kind of going there but then being able to queue into that is um that would that's that would be way before where swotor started and if you know what i mean and i could see myself and honestly i could <laughs> see him latching in in the future in some way to actually tying this into his stream where he could actually get some of his uh followers or whatever to log into the game give him a key come in let's do some pvp stuff you know yeah and honestly my friends i've i know we will have nights where it's like you know you're having a couple of raid i mean drinks and you're uh you know, just like, hey, let's go hang out in the stronghold, rearrange decorations, and create some crazy video clips or something. You know, just knocking each other off the side or whatever. I mean, we don't know what this... I hope you can drown in the Rishi stronghold. I'll say that much. What? <laughs> you should be able to get knocked into the water and actually drown. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> wow. The last More thing that drowning becomes here. an issue in this game, I'm probably not going to be on Manon ever. The... <laughs> The last uh, thing that we've got with uh, notes from Sakari is about uh, giving unranked players control over what PvP maps they play. He's yeah. not too sure about it. He can see certain game types like Hutball getting largely neglected. That will ruin it for the players who want to play Hutball. However they implement this, it'll need to be monitored carefully. And I've actually been in discussions about this a lot. My favored way, if you're going to give any kind of control... Oh, actually, there's two things. First, if the simple amount of control is... 
don't queue me for 4v4 arenas or only queue me for 4v4 arenas in unranked so that I can actually go play arena and practice because I want to get good at it, but I don't want to go into, re into ranked yet. I would love that kind of very uh, macro control. That would be great. Um, but if you start being able to pick your map, I don't like that idea because he's absolutely right. Basically, certain maps will die. Void Star will die because it takes twice as long as any other map. Forced. I mean, unless you get super, um, super quick caps or whatever. But uh, it's just, yeah, I don't like the idea of just picking one. But... If they need to give control in that fashion, my idea is pick one that you don't want to get queued into. So fine. Of all the maps you hate Hutball the most, okay, click. I'll never be queued into Hutball, but you'll get queued into everything else. I, I'd still like to see some sort of forced rotation just for the health of those maps and the people that do enjoy playing different things. I mean, that makes sense. I, I could go along with that. I absolutely hate arenas. I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? A lot of us who hate dueling hate arenas, although I'm going to guess that arenas. redness maybe might be different. No, but I hate I, arenas. I hate arenas, so I would be clicking that every single time and twice on Sunday, the no arenas button. Everything else, I hate Quest Ball, and I really dislike Hut Ball, but I can, you know, stum I, can, I can endure... A match more than I can endure an arena match. It's just way too long. <laughs> so, and God knows the, the true arena lovers do not need me in there. The only time I actually did okay was when Magic Ace was basically telling me what to do. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say, at least we had a good time when we were there. <laughs> that was only because you were there going, no, do this. Okay, now go do this. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do what she tells me to. It sounds good. And we won, but, so we won we one did. round. We lost the other two rounds, but we won one of the rounds. So. Right. But when you're not there, I get completely decimated, like at the beginning. Right? So unless I'm on my Stathler, which uh, I managed to make it a little longer, but it's still pathetic. Anyway, so I, I, that makes sense. Choose one. I think that's a good idea. Or maybe not have all the maps available every week. I mean, that's how some other games do it. Destiny does it that way. They have, a, like, a large pile of modes but they're not available every single week and yeah. you have to choose between five and of those five you can choose which one you want to do but if you have some of the achievements are tied to a certain amount of matches or wins in a certain map and so people they get they get bodies in them as they come back around because people need you know, the achievement or the whatever associated with that particular one. And elimination for Destiny 1, at least, was kind of like your practice for Trials of the Nine, which is their big, like, endgame PvP Well, and, and actually along those lines, something, and I must have dreamed <laughs> this because it's not in the notes anywhere and I haven't heard anybody talking about it other than what I thought was something I'd listened to, but apparently I think I must have totally dreamed this, but... Uh, in the vein of rotating maps on days, right? Um, so that, you know, at least like putting a higher likelihood so that, because more often than not, when I decide to do PVP for the night, I get the same map four out of five times, which is annoying enough. But some, uh, there was a thought that I heard that I thought would be brilliant, and I'd love to see them go in this direction if they're continuing to show some PVP love, which is in the unranked, having some sort of thematic changes during events. So during the Rakul event, You've got Rackles that'll randomly spawn at a node, right? That would or, be cool. You know, or during the Gree event, you've got, I don't, I can't even think of it, of anything. But just, you know, some kind of themes, random mechanics, or maybe it's not even tied to an event, but some mechanic for the day or for the week that's tied into to a map or a couple maps. And just different events, NPCs spawning, maybe even a boss in the middle of a map, you know, something like that. Like, no Vercoast. You've got to hold two nodes, but then you can also get, like, a team-wide buff if you kill a boss that spawns in the middle of that triangle or something like that. You know, like, just something creative to that you can add some mechanics to existing maps without having to build something entirely new. I think that would or be fun. Or even no Vercoast having, like, those bombs randomly generate so people can't necessarily remember where they are that would make it a little more interesting than running you know you gotta actually pay attention when you run back and forth from the nodes i mean that that would be 
kind of cool, I think. Anything else? We're over anyway. Yep. So <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us on the Council Slow Tour. We appreciate the people who are chit-chatting with us in chat and for giving their lovely opinions. We thank you so much for all the haters on Reddit. We love you, too. <laughs> also, we love the people who hang out in our straw polls and give us feedbacks and downvote us. You guys are the best. Thank you so, so much. But genuinely, thank you to all the people who download our podcast, watch us on YouTube, hang out on Patreon. We really, really, really appreciate you guys. We glad we are so glad, guys, gals, whatever. We, we are so glad that you are interested in this podcast, this show. We thank you for all of it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for loving this game. And if you don't love this game and you're just here to drink the haterade, thank you anyways. We appreciate it. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of the episode. The council is adjourned. If you'd like to reach us, you can email us at thecouncil at thecouncilswilter.com. You can find Elise on Twitter at abrown35, Magic Ace at the Magic Ace, me at r3dn4, and Sakari at I am Sakari. Hopefully he comes back soon. Don't forget to visit <laughs> our website, www.thecouncilswilter.com, and follow us on social media. You also don't need to forget our Patreon page at patreon.com slash thecouncilswilter. If you don't pay, play the game, please submit that sub to our patreon.com slash the Council Svotor. That's it for this week, guys. Prepare yourself, sisters. The war has come to Dathomir. I understand. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. What? How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. How can you be on the council and not be a master? Take a seat, young Skywalker. Forgive me, master.